Hello and good afternoon to everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you very much to, uh, to Ada for allowing me to say a few words on behalf of FIEC, the European Construction Industry Federation, during uh, this event for the presentation of your industry report 2020. Um, first of all, please allow me to say a few words about myself for those who don't know me. I'm uh, Domenico Campogrande. I'm the Director General of FIEC um, since last year. Uh, but I'm in FIEC since many, many years. Uh, I was dealing initially with economic and legal affairs and then with uh, social matters before taking the role of director of the organization. Um, for those who don't know FIEC, uh, which stands for the European Construction Industry Federation, uh, we are a European organization representing at the moment uh, 32 different national federations from 28 different countries, uh, the EU member states, but we have also some members outside the EU, like Ukraine, Turkey, or Norway, for example. And through our member federation, we represent construction companies of all sizes, from the very small family business to the large uh, international group, who uh, undertake all kinds of construction activity, from renovation works to uh, large infrastructure uh, works as well. And uh, what is also important to underline about FIEC is that we are an officially recognized uh, social partner at the European level. So we have a social dialogue uh, for the construction industry in which we represent the employers of the sector. It's uh, always uh, important and good to have in mind also when we speak about the construction, uh, what it represents in the European economy. Uh, we produce once a year uh, a statistical report and according to the latest information uh, of uh, which cover 2019, uh, we can say that the overall construction activity was a bit above uh, 1,300 billion euros, which corresponds to 9.5% of the European GDP. Uh, there are um, a bit more than 3 million uh, construction companies in the sector, most of them uh, small ones, and uh, around 13 million workers. So it's a sector which has a significant uh, weight in terms of economy and also as regards social aspects. Um, in the last month, it's not a surprise for everyone of you, uh, our sector has been severely hit by the, by the COVID crisis. And although the activity continued more or less normally in, in, in some countries, in others, uh, like in the case in Spain, um, but not only, it's also in Italy and France, it had to stop completely. So with a great, great impact on, uh, on, uh, on our sector. The activity they restarted, of course, after a while, um, with uh, san specific sanitary protocols and requirements uh, that have been put in place, which have also uh, an impact. So now activity has gone back more or less to normal level with, with additional costs uh, related to these uh, sanitary requirements and of course, less productivity. So um, this makes uh, the let's say the forecast for this year in order to see what the real impact of the crisis has been on the sector, extremely complicated. We are collecting uh, data from our members and uh, the situation uh, varies significantly from one country to the other. Um, overall for 2020, we think uh, that uh, the drop in activity compared to 2019 should be around minus 10%, more or less. This is an average uh, with uh, much more dramatic figures uh, around minus 20% for Italy and Spain, for example, to uh, more, let's say, a stable situation like it's the case, for example, in Austria or in Finland, where uh, our colleagues are expecting a small decrease of minus 1%, uh, more or less. So very diverging situations uh, among the countries. But what is more even worrying uh, for, from what we hear for, from our members 
is the situation for 2021, because we realize there that even for the better performing countries, there are a lot of uncertainties as regards both private and public investment. So this makes all the situation also for 2021 extremely worrying and uncertain. We have no clear view at the moment about uh, that perspective. In this framework, should we be worried or pessimistic? Probably not. Uh, and uh, this is for two uh, main reasons. The first one is that, as uh, was underlined just yesterday by the President of the Commission, Mrs. von der Leyen, in her speech uh, about the state of the, uh, of the Union, um, she reminded that among the main priorities uh, for this Commission is the European Green Deal, with the aim of reaching carbon neutrality for Europe uh, by 2050. And such goal cannot be achieved without a direct involvement of the construction industry. Uh, there are various initiatives that are mentioned that will uh, that have been mentioned that will be put on the agenda that are going to start regarding energy efficiency of buildings, for example, which at the moment are among the highest contributor contributors to uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, but we have also a communication which will come soon about renovation wave across the European Union. We, uh, we have initiatives about circular economy, which is certainly also very important for ADA. So these are all initi initiatives which will need uh, direct participation of the construction sector. This is the first element. The second one is that if we look at the funding that uh, should be made available from the European Union for the member states uh, through the, this year. You heard about it, the EU Recovery Fund and all the related initiatives and, and programs. Well, it's clear and it has been repeated that all the national recovery plans will need to be in line with the, the European priorities and in particular with the European Green Deal, which means that all the sustainable investment, because they will need to be sustainable according to some criteria that will need to be defined. Again, they cannot be undertaken without the direct involvement of the construction sector. So these two elements give us some uh, hope, I would say, uh, despite the, the worrying situation that we see at the moment. Having said this, uh, in order to be able to benefit really from these opportunities, these two opportunities that I just mentioned, which can be really huge for, uh, for our sector. There are also, I think, uh, two main conditions that need to be met. First of all, when we look at the situation today, we realize and we hear from our members that uh, construction companies across the EU, in not, not just in some member states, but in several member states, are really struggling to find workers uh, with the right skills. This means that there is a real need and urgency to focus and invest in training and education. Uh, we are in a very rapidly changing environment. We see it through the digitalization also, for example, uh, and these rapid changes require also a rapid adaptation of the training schemes. This is uh, really uh, an extremely important uh, priority that needs also to be tackled. Second element of importance that we need to uh, keep an eye on is that when we look at, again, at the priority, the environmental ones, but also everything related to digitalization, which will also be a major priority for the current commission, uh, they have completely changed the patterns, the structure, and the interaction between the various stakeholders in the construction sector. So this means that we will need, uh, we already need now a good cooperation between the different stakeholders, but we will need for the future and because of these priorities, an increasing, a better and a stronger partnership throughout the value chain of the construction sector. At our level, at European level, we have already taken this into account and we have set up together with other colleagues 
what we call the Construction 2050 Alliance, of which uh, Ada is also uh, participating, and which at the moment gathers around 20, uh, sorry, 46 European organizations which have a connection with the construction sector. So we have set up this alliance at European level precisely to develop and to foster this partnership between the different stakeholders. So these are, I, th I think, two important conditions that need to be tackled absolutely. So uh, these are the main messages that I want to share with you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. And in FIEC, we are, of course, uh, all looking forward to continue the, the good collabor collaboration that we have had in the past with ADA. And we, uh, we will uh, certainly continue it in the, in the next coming years. Thank you very much.